Hey, Genesis family, it is day 32 of our Lenten journey through the Gospel of Mark, and our reading today is Mark chapter 11, verses 12 through 33. Here we encounter a strange story of Jesus cursing a fig tree, which is told around the dramatic scene of him clearing the temple. Both of them illustrate Jesus' authority, which amazes the disciples, but provokes the religious authorities to question him. We've seen this many times before in the gospel. Jesus exercises authority over evil and sickness and nature and death. It creates amazement in the crowds and his disciples, but it moves the religious authorities to pepper him with questions to trap him. But this time it's different because it's coming on the heels of what we read yesterday. There, Jesus intentionally chose a colt and rode it into the holy city which was a prophetic action declaring himself to be the king in accordance with Old Testament prophecy amidst the shouts of Hosanna, blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father, David. Mark has been preparing us for these moments. In the beginning, in Mark chapter 1, he says that Jesus' message was the time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. There are references to the kingdom littered all the way through the gospel of Mark. And now, after declaring himself to be king, Jesus is using kingly authority to clean the house. He comes into the temple, and he doesn't like what he sees. Materialism, commercialism, people who are using the religious system to barter and trade, selfish ambition and greed, people who have missed the whole point. Jesus says that they have made God's house a den of robbers, when it should be a house of prayer. So he throws the tables over, and he drives people out, and he forbids people from bringing their merchandise in. He is using authority to subvert what is happening in the temple. Which leads us to the fig tree. Because Jesus comes up to the fig tree, and like the temple, he sees something he does not like. Leaves, but no fruit. It's strange because this was not the season for fruit, so it seems a little bit unfair for Jesus to curse the fig tree when this wasn't the season. But that precisely misses the point because what Jesus is doing is not just cleansing the temple, he is condemning the temple. So he is condemning the fig tree because he is introducing a new order, a new rhythm to how things will go a new kingdom. He is not simply enhancing the old, he is leveling it. We know that because just a couple chapters later, Jesus will foretell the complete destruction of this temple. That system is done, and Jesus is introducing a new system. He's driving away the sacrificial animals because he himself is the sacrifice. The disciples are surprised at the cursing of the fig tree, But why should they be? They've seen Jesus do all kinds of miracles. But this was a prophetic action again that Jesus says, if you'll say to this mountain, be removed, it will be gone. What Jesus is doing is introducing the new order of things, a new kingdom. He is declaring that the old has passed and the new has come. And he is encouraging his disciples to have faith because they will continue this work of ushering in this new kingdom. And they need to do it in the spirit of forgiveness, not in any animosity, not in violent aggression. But he will do it now through the cross that he is marching toward. Of course, the Pharisees don't like what he did because it threatened their whole system. So they asked him, who gave you authority to do this? Instead of answering them directly, which Jesus rarely did with the religious authorities because their questions were not sincere, he answered a question with a question. He challenged them about what they said about John's baptism, and it shows the hypocrisy in their lives. They don't want to give an answer because of fears. So Jesus then says, neither will I answer you. Jesus was not about trying to convince people who were uninterested in the truth. He was simply on his way to the cross. He was using kingly authority to send prophetic messages about what was going to happen. 
Ultimately, we'll find out that the temple will be destroyed. We know that it happened by the Romans in 70 AD. But never fear, because Jesus wasn't here to rescue the temple. He wasn't here to save the old system. He was here to subvert the whole thing and introduce a new kingdom that will come to bear through his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection. He is preparing the disciples for that. Which leads us back to ourselves. As we look at this, we will find out that we now are the temple of God. And there is a sense in which Jesus looks inside of us, like the fig tree, like the temple, and what does he see? Does he like what he sees? Are we fruit-bearing in the kingdom? Are we simply a people of prayer who are not trying to get something for ourselves, but are there to give our lives away through the sacrifice of Jesus? Jesus looks inside of us, and he wants to clear us out. He wants to cleanse our space so that we can be a people of prayer who are fruitful. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the message of the fig tree. We give you thanks for the introduction of a new order, of a new kingdom. And we ask you in these holy moments to help us to be the fruitful people that you long for us to be, that knows no season of unfruitfulness. Help us to be a temple that is a place of prayer in our hearts, that we might truly be your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.